Hello, I am Anuradha Malik. In the preceding episodes of class 11 biology, we have learnt about the cell, cellular organization, the prokaryotic, eukaryotic cells and some of the organelles seen in the eukaryotic cell. In this episode, we shall learn about the remaining organelles of the eukaryotic cell. The ribosomes are organelles not found by membranes. They were also seen in the prokaryotic cell. The ribosomes were first observed by George Pallade in 1953 under the electron microscope. They are composed of RNA and ribosomal proteins but are not bound by any membrane. The eukaryotic ribosome is of the ATS type which is made up of two subunits the 60S and the 40S. S in this is the sedimentation coefficient which indirectly is the measure of density and size of the ribosomes. The ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. The eukaryotic cell also possesses certain cytoskeletal structures, the cilia, flagella and the centrioles. Cytoskeleton is the network of filamentous proteinaceous structures present in the cytoplasm which function as mechanical support for motility and for maintenance of shape. The cilia and flagella are here like outgrowths of the cell membrane. Cilia are small and numerous. They work like ores making the cell or the surrounding fluid move. Flagella are comparatively longer and fewer in number and are also responsible for cell movement. Under the electron microscope, cilia and flagella are seen covered with a plasma membrane. Their core called exoneme possesses a number of microtubules running parallel to the long axis. The exoneme usually has nine pairs of doublets of radially arranged peripheral microtubules and a pair of centrally located microtubules. Such an arrangement of microtubules is known as 9 plus 2 array. The central tubules are connected by bridges and are also enclosed by a central sheath which is connected to one of the tubules of each peripheral doublet by a radial spot. Both the cilium and flagellum emerge from centriole like structures called the basal bodies. Notice the cartwheel like structure in this picture depicting the sectional view of cilia and flagella, the centrosome and the centriole. Centrosome is an organelle usually containing two cylindrical structures called centrioles which lie perpendicular to each other. They are surrounded by amorphous pericentriolar materials. The centriole forms the basal body of cilia or flagella. They also form the spindle fibers during cell division in animal cells. Centrioles also have a cartwheel like organization. They are made up of 9 peripheral fibrils of tubulin that is the 9 plus 0 arrangement. Each of the peripheral fibril is a triplet here. The adjacent triplets are also linked. The central part is also proteinaceous and called the hub which is connected with the tubules of the peripheral triplets by radial spokes made of protein. Finally, the nucleus. The nucleus is commonly referred to as the control center of the cell. It was first described by Robert Brown in 1831. Normally, there is one nucleus per cell, but variations in the number of nuclei are also seen. Example, in most mammalian RBCs, and in sieve tube cells of vascular plants, there is no nucleus. The nucleus is also bound by a double membrane. The space between the two membranes is called perinuclear space, which is 10 to 15 nanometers. The outer membrane is usually continuous with a rough endoplasmic reticulum. The nuclear envelope has minute pores, which allows the movement of RNA and proteins between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. The nuclear matrix called the nucleoplasm contains nucleolus and chromatin. 
the nucleoli are spherical structures and are the site for active ribosomal RNA synthesis also known as rRNA. The interface nucleus has loose and indistinct network of nucleoprotein fibers called chromatin. Chromatin contains DNA and some basic proteins called histones, some non-histone proteins and also RNA. A single human cell has approximately a 2 meter long thread of DNA distributed amongst its 46 chromosomes. During cell division, cells show structured chromosomes in place of the chromatin. Let us have a look at the picture of a nucleus. Every chromosome essentially has a primary constriction or the centromere on the sides of which disc shaped structures called kinetochores are present. Have a look at this picture of a chromosome showing the kinetochores at the centromere. Based on the position of the centromere, chromosomes can be classified into four types. These are first the metacentric chromosome. In the metacentric chromosome, the centromere is in the center forming two equal arms of the chromosome. Second, the submetacentric chromosome. In this, the centromere is nearer to one end of the chromosome resulting in one shorter and one longer arm. Third, the acrocentric chromosome. The centromeres are situated close to the end of the chromosome forming one extremely long and one very short arm. And finally, the telocentric chromosome in which the centromere is at a terminal position. Let us see the diagrammatic representation of these chromosomes. Sometimes a few chromosomes have non-staining secondary constrictions at a constant location. This gives an appearance of a small fragment called satellite. Apart from all these organelles, the eukaryotic cells may also contain certain microbodies. These are membrane bound minute vesicles that contain various enzymes. They are present in both plant and animal cells. Before concluding the lesson cell, the unit of life, a few things which you must remember. One, the differences between a prokaryotic and a eukaryotic cell, the differences between a gram positive and a gram negative bacteria, the structural organization in the mitochondria, the chloroplast and the nucleus. This is all for today and in the next lesson we shall learn about cell division. Thank you.